At the end of the lesson, you are going to define multivariate Gaussian. Relate multivariate Gaussian to univariate Gaussian or normal distribution and appreciate the significance of multivariate Gaussian. In our last lesson, we learned about analyzing Gaussian density function. We learned that Gaussian density function is used in all sciences because of the remarkable results, which are known as the central limit theorem. We noted that it represents the general truth because it defines measurable quantities. We also learned that it is symmetrical. Its highest point can be found at the mean, and it is an entire family of normal probability distribution. If you missed lesson 11, you may pause this video and continue once you are done with lesson number 11. This makes lesson number 12 more exciting. In this session, we will learn about multivariate Gaussian. So how do we define it? Is it the same with the last kind of Gaussian that we had before in lesson number 11? Of course, this one is different as the name suggests. It is multivariate. It means it has more than one variables. So how do we deal with it? So this mathematical statement defines a Gaussian or multivariate Gaussian. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to examine the elements of this formula for us to be able to understand the function of multivariate Gaussian so well. So we have here sigma. What does sigma mean? So, and also this one. So as you could see, here there is no bar, and here you could see two bars. Okay, so let's have this one first. So this one is the determinant of the population covariance matrix sigma. So this is a matrix and covariance matrix, and this is a determinant. Okay, now, what about this one? So we learned that it has something to do with exponential, and it consists of the product of the transpose of x <clears throat> excuse me x minus mu the inverse of sigma and x minus mu so which has a dimension 1 by k it's 1 by k or it by k by k which is equal to 1 by 1, like a scalar. So with this, your px or our px here can have a single value. Okay? So the next question is, how is it related to univariate Gaussian? So this is, again, this is our last lesson, lesson number 11. So I would like you to remember that it is given by this formula. If you watched our lesson 11, then you could remember this formula. And we discussed about this formula. So here we can see that negative 1 over 2 then is an argument of the exponential function. So being a quadratic equation of the variable x. Okay. So because the coefficient is negative, so we have here negative, negative sign. So we are sure that the parabola is pointing downwards. So it's like this. So this is the parabola that's pointing downwards. And this one here, maybe you would ask me, what's the relation of this to this one? So what is this? Is this the same as this? So, as you could see here, we have the standard deviation, and then we have the variance. So, this one, we learned that it, it does not depend on the value of x, or x here. So, why? Because it is constant. Whatever the value of x does not affect the value of this one. So, we treat it as a normalization factor so that 
when we compute the probability, when it's perfect, then it becomes 1, and that's the highest one. So what about in the case of multivariate Gaussian? So how do the elements of the equation behave? Are they the same? Do they, the, the elements here have the same intuition as here? So here, the exponential function is a quadratic form in the vector variable x. See, again, I want to repeat that. The exponential function is a quadratic form in the vector variable x. So the e or the sigma, in this case, we have here, the sigma is in positive definite and also here. Is in positive definite and we know that if the inverse of any positive matrix is also positive definite then we can say that for any non-zero vector that is vector z which is transpose z covariance the inverse of the covariance matrix then z is greater than zero so this tells us this tells us that for any vector x is not equal to mu, then we have these two conditions. And these two conditions are, the first one is that x minus mu transpose, sigma negative 1 or the inverse, x minus mu is greater than 0. And here, the second situation is that negative one half x minus mu transpose sigma or the covariance matrix negative one x minus mu then this is less than zero okay now the problem here is that is if you don't know how to compute your covariance matrix so if you have some time, and I really suggest that you have to make some time, you're going to review or study, if you haven't studied this one before, how to do the covariance matrix, because this is really very helpful when we are talking about the multivariate Gaussian density function. So that's it. And then, just like, just like the case of univariate Gaussian, its parabola is opening downward. Just like here, the parabola for this one is also pointing downwards. And maybe you would ask me why it's pointing downward. The simple answer to that is that, look at this one, it's negative. Also, the coefficient in front, okay, these coefficients, so this coefficient in front here does not depend on the value of x, just like in the univ univariate Gaussian. So, and also it acts as a normalization factor to ensure that it is always equal to one. Again, that is if, if it's perfect, if the density or the, dist the, the distribution is perfect, then this will be equal to one. Of course, being perfect is not very easy to attain. So now let's go to the concept of covariance matrix. So this one. Now let's go to the concept of covariance matrix. So our understanding to this concept is necessary to understanding multivariate Gaussian distributions properly. But only that here in our case, I'm just showing to you the process, how it is arrived at using the symbols. But if you really would like to do some kind of computations, I really suggest that you study, make some kind of review if you had this one before, or if you would like me to discuss here in this channel, please comment below so I could make um, some kind of tutorial or video lessons for, for everybody and for you. So if you can recall, and I want to help you recall, the covariance of a pair of random variable x and y can be defined by this formula, okay? 
So of course we are working with multiple variables here and utilizing covariance matrix offers us a clear and direct way of summarizing the covariances of all pairs of variables. So if you would like to ask, how does X affect Y? Or what's the relationship between X and Y? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it neutral or what? So then you have to understand and you have to take note of how covariant principle or concept can be used to understand the relationship between or among the variables if you have more than two. The covariance matrix, which is denoted as E or sigma, remember in our case, I told you this one is a covariance matrix. This is the determinant. Okay. It is the N by N matrix whose I, whose I and Jth entry is covariance x and y. Okay, I know that um, upon hearing this discussion, it would be somewhat not clear because we don't have our examples here. So understanding all of these concepts, all of these equations or mathematical expressions, how does Gaussian look? So if we are going to draw it it looks like this. So we have here two kinds. What is this and what is this? So what do they mean? Let's remember that the mean corresponds to the, to the location or center of the distribution. So before we talked about that it could be in the middle of the distribution. Okay, it could be in the middle or it could be sometimes here. It could be sometimes here. It depends on what kind of data that you have. But if it's really perfect, then your, if it's perfect, let's make another drawing. If it's perfect distribution, okay, if it's a perfect distribution, then your median is equivalent to the mean and to the mode. That is if it's perfect. So again, let's remember that the mean corresponds to the location or center of the distribution. So we have here our shapes. So for this one, for this bigger distribution, the mean is found here. And for this one, the smaller one, the, the, the mean is here. And for this elliptical shape, the mean is here at the center. So what does each one mean? So in one dimension, this one, this is the picture of one dimension, the square root of the variance corresponds to the width of the distribution. So that means that means that when the distribution is larger, then the variance could be larger as the picture shows. But if it is slimmer like this one then we could say that the variance is also smaller so for this picture it's easier to describe what our variance or how our variance affects the distribution so in multiple dimensions this one the eigenvectors of the variance matrix give the principal axis of the elliptical equiprobability contours of the distribution and the square root of the eigenvalues, the width of the distribution in the corresponding directions. So let's not forget that if the dimension is equal to 1, then the density is equivalent to the univariate normal distribution. If it is 2, like this one, Again, this is 1. The dimension is equal to 1, so which means that there is only one variable. But in this case, we have two variables. So in this case, the result is a three-dimensional bell-shaped curve. But of course, if you're going to draw this one, it's going to be some kind of dimensional, like a 3D. Okay, but it's really hard for me to draw that, but it's something like this. I'm sorry for the drawing, but okay. 
here you could see some kind of okay like that it, it looks like this what is this for why do we have to study this let me say it again that multivariate Gaussian reflects correlation between random variables. Just imagine fitting data to a simple line y equals mx plus b. But you know that some data are scattered everywhere. Randomly picking the values of x and y will tell you that fitting on a line is impossible. So with this, using the multivariate Gaussian will help you capture the correlation between x and y. After all being said and done, let's try this. What is a multivariate Gaussian? How do you differentiate Gaussian or multivariate Gaussian from univariate Gaussian? And what is the significance of multivariate Gaussian? Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next session.